Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, obviously, I'm a proponent of the bill. I've heard a lot about victims, and when we talked about the death penalty in the Judiciary Committee, the first thing I talked about was the victims. But when I hear us talk about the victims, I hear us talk about one set of victims. I don't hear us talk about the victims that came before the Judiciary Committee a couple of years ago. I don't think most of us even remember their names. We remember Dr. Pettit, but I don't think we remember Gail Canzano and many other people. We don't remember those people because what they're talking about, what they're asking us to do, doesn't comport with what we think is the right thing to do. And we cannot assign to the things that we feel the value of truth simply because they comport with what we feel. And that is what we do a lot of the time. You know, I don't think any of us have a district where every single person in that district thinks this is the right thing to do, and by this I mean the death penalty. I don't think so. And so I think when we make these decisions, we have to act as if we are representing all of the people in our district, and we cannot stand behind, well, some of the people in our district think this is the right thing to do. This is a decision we have to make because it's right or it's wrong. This is a decision we have to make because of what we believe. And if we're going to talk like we've been talking part of the day about whether the people trust us, whether they're going to believe in us, then we have to be able to stand up and say, not because I hid behind the people in my district, but because it is right or it is wrong, I am going to do this thing. Representative Cafaro talked earlier about he doesn't believe that this is unworkable. And he said he doesn't believe it's unworkable because it's not linked to how often we do this thing, how often we tell people. Well, I beg to differ. The Supreme Court, the court that we talked about, the Supreme Court has told us that it is linked to how often we do this. It is. In 1976, the Supreme Court ruled on the death penalty. And we talk about our statute being uh, constitutional. And it is as it is written. But it also has to be constitutional in the way that we practice it. And when we want to talk about doing this rarely, we are on troubled ground. Because the Supreme Court said that when the death penalty statute applies, it should be used. And even the proponents of the death penalty say to us, well, we don't want to do it all the time. Well, if you don't want to do it all the time, then you don't want to do it. Be honest with the people of the state. If you want to be a proponent of doing the death penalty, then be a proponent of doing the death penalty. And that means it should apply every time that it applies. That is the reality. If we're going to talk about a workable death penalty statute, we have to talk about this in reality. We have to put these things into context, and we have not been doing that. We've been making emotional arguments, and I understand them. They're valuable arguments, but we also have to tell the people of the state the truth. And so when you vote tonight, please think about the realities of what you're saying. We have a problem with the way that the death penalty is practiced in this state. That is not my opinion. That is a fact. We have a problem. You have a prosecutor in Waterbury who tells you the penalty for murder is not death, and yet we practice the death penalty here. And you go to another jurisdiction, and you have a different penalty when you murder people. And in the place where I live, you're not going to get the death penalty. You can murder all the people that you want, but you will not get the death penalty. This is not about justice, because justice is supposed to be blind. Well, it's not blind where I live, and it's not blind for the people that I know. This is not about what we've been talking about today. This is about some people are special. That's what it's about. And Representative McCrory is right. Depending on who you are and what you look like, it may or may not apply. Representative McCoy gets mistake, mistaken for Representative Hewitt. And I can kind of understand that. But I get mistaken for both of them, and I can't understand that at all. But that is what we deal with when we deal with all of these questions. This is not about whether you're a Democrat or Republican, whether you're tough on crime or not. Because, damn it, if we were tough on crime, we'd be tough on education. We would be, but we let those education bills go by, and we don't, and we can get to it another year, we can get to it some other time. We're not talking about any of those things. 
let's put this back into the context that it belongs in and talk about how this really affects people's lives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.